joining us right now in an exclusive interview to talk about Western Union's earnings is the company's CEO. He's Hikmet Ursak. So, Hikmet, let's. Great to have you here, first of all. Thank you, having me here. Let's address some of the concerns because I think analysts are wondering whether some of the spending that you guys are going to be doing it will it impact your ability to pay dividends. Talk to us about that one. Well, I think we do the right investment. I mean, I'm a fortunate CEO of a fortunate company. We produce a lot of cash. Our cash allocation is, in, you know, allocated against the business priorities, obviously, against operative growth, against uh, paying back to the shareholders. We bought about uh, stock buyback this year, about $660 million, uh, million dollars of stock buyback, and we increased our dividend by 14 percent. So you're not worried about the inability I'm to not, keep uh, that up? No, and we, and we have still cash to invest in the business, buying new, uh, and we did the acquisition about travel ex acquisition, about a billion dollar acquisition, which right. gives us a future growth opportunity. And I uh, want to, I want to talk about that acquisition a little bit more, but let me also ask you about what about aggressive pricing hurting your margins? How, how, how do you deal with that and manage that? Well, usually uh, we have a pricing investment about 1 to 3 percent of our of our revenue, but this this year we believe we will have only 1 to 2 percent because we are very well positioned in the market. Right. And I think that, uh, you know, the customer, customers like us, our, our transactions are growing. We are growing very... But you know customers, they can like you, but if they get a better price elsewhere, they will move at a heartbeat. So how do you hold on to them? I think we, we are a premium price company. We have the global brand. We have a very strong brand. We are present in 200 countries. Right. We present 16,000 corridors. We have 470,000 locations globally. I think customers like us. What about the European debt crisis? Talk to me about the impact that that's having on your company. Well, obviously, everybody talks about debt crisis, right? Uh, not only in Europe, globally, obviously. But our, our business is mostly impacted if uh, by uh, job creation. And uh, I would say that our, being in 200 countries, we respond to the global issues pretty well. You what know, does that mean? You respond to the global well, issues we pretty do, well. Well, we do uh, re, we do invest against the opportunities or against the risks. Mm -hmm. And I think being in 200 countries uh, is very very well. We uh, play with the portfolio very well. We grow in Asia Pacific. We grow by 16 percent this year. Is that the growth area that you really want to focus on going forward? Uh, definitely, Asia Pacific is a huge opportunity, but also product wise. I think business to business money transfer is a huge opportunity for the for the companies go to and we have the core business and core business is carrying us right. uh, year over year quarter over quarter we just increased our revenue outlook for this year well let's talk about that because the stock was up about five and a half percent yesterday it did pull back a little bit um, today but yesterday's when you came out with the numbers you did increase uh, both your earnings and revenue uh, guidance guidance for 2011 why why were we able to do that well we see the confidence of the consumers they trust us I think especially in the times like that. The consumer trust really a global brand, which is 160 years around here, right? What does and that mean, though? You know, I'm always curious about how you guys kind of define it. Is it just repeat business or more business? Like, how do you measure that, that confidence it's both, among your consumers? It's both. And we also get new customer segments. I tell you a story. We recently launched a new, about the end of 2000, a new product called 5450 in the U.S. Uh, it's our, one of our biggest growing co uh, corridors, money transfer within the U United States. Money transfer in the U.S. In the U.S., f uh, you pay $5 for $50. And one of our biggest growing corridors is New York to New York. The people see the convenience, they go to a next location, they have an emergency payment for $100, they go to the next location, uh, pay the fee, and uh, the, his friend or his family picks up from the next location. It's a very good business. It's pretty, pretty easy. Um, new customer segments, what are you looking at at this point then? In that uh, point, we are looking, besides our consumer money transfer, cross-border uh, consumer money transfer business, we are looking... Because consumer to consumer is your big one, correct? It's the big one, it's the main part of, the, of our co cooperation, and we are looking now for SME money transfer. There's a huge trade, cross-border trade between small business entities. Yeah. South, South, South Cone money transfer. And we just, uh, you know, uh, we just invested about a billion dollar uh, for, uh, we just signed an agreement to buy a company. Uh, we didn't close it yet. It's called TravelX. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And we're going to be immediately present in 16 countries. And I see a huge uh, consumer, a huge customer opportunity here. While we've got the CEO of Western Union on hand, we did also want to take a look at the way the business has really transformed over the years. In less than a year, Hikmet Ursek has emerged as a power player, taking his company to the next level. This isn't your father's Western Union, which started out when communicating was a more primitive process. Dashes and dots. Western Union's claim to fame for 160 years. It started in 1851 with a single telegraph line, transmitting electric signals, messages from Buffalo to St. Louis. 
Fifteen years later, ticker symbol WU hit the New York Stock Exchange and the company provided stock ticker technology in the 19th century. It cannibalized the competition as the telegram became a primary way to communicate cross-country. It also became a way for voters to express their opinions. Uh, telegrams, 50,000 of them. And the government used telegrams to convey unwanted news during wartime. John Blasey has worked for Western Union for 49 years, starting as a teletype writer straight out of high school. Bad news, but there's a lot of good news too. You know, anniversaries, birthdays, a lot of that. But by 2005, the company was sending only 20,000 telegrams a year. A year later, Western Union discontinued the service. Instead, it turned to its global money transfer company, a product it had been building up since the 80s. We can move money from anywhere to anywhere. David Yates is president of business development and innovation at Western Union. It operates in more than 200 countries at 386,000 locations and does more than 50 percent of its business overseas. Now about 73 percent of Western Union's revenue comes from cash-to-cash -cash remittances, transactions in which those who emigrate send money back to families in their home countries. Western Union alone transferred last year, I think, $76 billion of principal. So just Western Union's remittance business would represent the equivalent of the economy of, let's say, Bangladesh. One of the most accurate trackers of Western Union stock, analyst Andrew Jeffrey of SunTrust Robinson Humphrey, sees growth opportunities for Western Union in Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. I think one of the things investors are focused on keenly is, can the company walk and chew gum at the same time? Can it accelerate revenue growth at the same time it's investing uh, in new businesses and drive margins? For growth, Western Union is betting on mobile banking. Consumers can go into a Western Union office and send money directly to a recipient's mobile phone in Kenya. Noel Micho regularly uses the system to help support his mother and family. The money goes a long way to help at home, you know, paying school fees, paying her bills, helping out around the house. Let's bring back Hikmet Ersek. He is the uh, CEO of Western Union. You know, there was an, a thing that one of the analysts brought up in that piece, and they talked about, you know, can you accelerate revenue growth at the same time you're investing in new businesses and driving margins? Can you do that? Yes, the answer is yes. I think we are, it's the right balance. You know, we do invest in our core business. First of all, the core business carries us the cash to cash money transfer. There's huge room finding new customer segments, new geographies like in uh, in APEC region, Asia Pacific region. The second you see still see tremendous growth out there. Yeah, I think yes. We are going. You know, we, we just increased our on the C to C business. Our forecast from three to four percent to four to uh, four to five percent uh, revenue growth, which is a huge huge step, and that's the forecast. And you know, on the other part of the business is that our electronic channels actually it's growing currently. Our WesternUnion.com business is growing by forty percent internationally. Right. So and when so I when you hear people say that Western Union is a dying business, I mean, I'll be honest with you. When we started looking at the company, we're like, who even thinks about Western Union? What do you say to them. Well, that was the first time I came to see you, and my first day, somebody told me that is that a dying business? It's not. We can't prove it. We are executing against our strategy. We are investing in our electronic channels. You know, uh, Kel, the good thing is that we have the fundamentals. We have about 470,000 locations combining electronic with locations. So the infrastructure is in place. It's in place. We have the regulatory environment. We have been in uh, in 200 countries. Mm. We have a, so this brand gives us the uh, gives us the possibility to invest in the new channels also. You have been investing in new businesses. You mentioned TravelX uh, payments for almost a billion dollars, uh, an all-cash deal. You also bought, and forgive me if I mispronounce, is it Finant? Finant. Finant, an Italian money transfer firm. And then you did a, a takeover of, is it uh, Angelo Costa? Yes. Okay, and they're another Italian company. I mean, do you plan to do a lot more acquisitions? You've got the cash, you say. Uh, we have the cash. I mean, if, the, if there is a right acquisition, of course, we will look at it, right? But all our acquisition has been supporting our strategy. Yeah. The cost the uh, acquisition and the Finit acquisition are core business, and the TravelX acquisition is about the new customer segment SME business. So acquisition strategy is, has to support our business, and we will look at this. What's the big, biggest risk? I mean, you see a lot of mobile applications coming on and mobile tra you know, abilities. I mean, who do you watch the most uh, that you see as your biggest competitor at this point? I mean, if you look at in the cross-border money transfer business, we have about 17.2% market share. AITA just came up with new statistics. We gained again market share. Uh, we have a lot of corridors 
relations, country to country competition. Mm. But generally, we look at that. I think we are very well positioned. We are also very well positioned to combine the electronic with our existing core business. So you tell me you have no competition? <laughs> no, we have a lot of competition, <laughs> uh, Carol. I mean, that keeps me fit, actually, and think, makes me thinking about how we innovate this company day by day new, to new, new step. Well, it's certainly an interesting company. We had fun looking at it. Uh, Hikmet, thank you so much. Thank you, Carol. Appreciate it. Hikmet Ersek, he is the CEO of Western Union.